this poison in the space of everybody being so cheap. And what it is, it's a result of everybody playing so much defense and not playing enough offense. Right. So like, let me walk through the actual map. In this GSD Pro episode, I'm taking this table, these mics, this headset, and everything. We're lifting it out of this room and we're taking it on stage at GSD Con for GSD Show's first ever live studio audience episode with the master at video marketing, Mr. Billy Jean Shaw. That's the key to scaling and rapid growth. What you guys have to realize in this industry, you have to be ahead of the curve. Do this exercise 30 times. You have all of your content done for the month. Want to get inside access to the ad campaigns that have been used by some of the most successful fitness studio brands from all over the world? The ads they've used, the landing pages, texts, emails, videos, what their prospect journey looks like? All of that is available now in LRVT, which stands for Loud Rumor Virtual Training. Whether you're a rookie in the advertising game or a seasoned professional, LRVT is designed to help you and your team advertise like the best fitness studios on the planet. Each training is well produced, thorough, and based on proven campaigns that we've ran successfully over and over again. You'll also be a member of our community where you can ask questions and get support from our team as well as the many other studio owners that we work with. To get started, go to loudrumorvt.com. Again, that's loudrumorvt.com. Ladies and gentlemen, Billy Jean Shaw! Hi. Hi, 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 hi. We can kill the music, we can kill the music. Um, before we get started, can I put you on the spot? You do it every time anyway, so. I was gonna do it anyways. <laughs> hi everyone. <laughs> hi everybody. <laughs> that after lunch spot's kind of weird because you're in a food coma and shit, so. Um, I wanted to take a moment and, uh, and acknowledge someone in this room that I have, as a friend, over the last four years, seen him grow a company at such fast scale with so much process to build a brand. And then I walk in here today and I see the setup and I see how it's set up outside and I sneak in the back and I see all of you guys, I see the energy, I see the gratitude, I see the group. And it's been so inspiring to me to watch you grow this whole thing. So can we do one more standing ovation for Mike Arce and the Loud Rumor team? <clears throat> Seriously, man, it's really impressive. Thank it you. Is. Thank you. Okay. Now we can jam. Ready? I'm ready. All right. So, Billy, you are on the... Is your, is your chair higher than mine? <laughs> yeah, I, I needed to be taller in order to... Feel... No, you can go higher. Look. Oh, we're good. Sure. What's up? I feel weird not looking at the crowd. <laughs> you can see yourself over here, too. Oh, there it is. Are you ready? Billy, welcome to the GSD show. You are a GSD pro, and so we're here for the first time ever. We are doing a show in front of a live studio audience. What's up? <laughs> How's it feel to be the first guest on the GSD show with a live studio audience? It feels great. It feels great. Thank you very much. Well, we me. couldn't do it with anybody other than Mr. Billy Jean. I appreciate that. So you are on here as you are the pro of video ads, but I consider you a professional in a lot of other things as well, especially when it comes to marketing, advertising, sales, and I would consider branding as well as you branding yourself really well. Thank you. So, Five years ago, what would your life look like? Five years ago, um, I mean, shit, pretty basic. I was probably about six years ago, six and a half years ago, I was living at my parents' house, probably like everybody in this room trying to figure it out at some point, um, and I had no idea how I was going to do that. I was obsessed with this thing called Facebook ads, but when I started selling Facebook ads, nobody knew what they were. Because on Facebook, you guys remember when you logged in, it was only like the right column? And like you scroll on, and like I told people, like this is what I do is I create Facebook ads, and people are like there's no advertisements on Facebook, dude. Right. I'm like no, it's those boxes on the right. So I was just getting into that and figuring out this whole game. And then actually, and, and nobody felt like they ever looked at those boxes, so yeah. that's why nobody wanted to play there. And once it made it look like the organic content, the game changed. Everything changed. Yeah. And I was I, I had the privilege of being one of the first people to start using newsfeed ads for actually generating leads for gyms. 
And that's how I really sharpen my skill set is doing that. So it's been a hell of a ride, but they're effective. But when I was selling it, like everybody said it didn't work. Mm -hmm. I remember I was, uh, I, won't, I won't call them out because they might be watching this and they might be here. But it was one of the first gyms I was going to work with, and I was selling physical products. And we agreed to work together. And then he called me the day before we were about to start and says, hey, we just got this new manager from Equinox. And they said, Facebook ads don't work. And I was like, wait, what do you mean? And at the time, I needed the money. So I was like, that's not cool. So I sent him an email and I said, hey, if this doesn't work, I promise you I will pay you back everything and I will double it. And I'll send you an email right now if you just give me a shot. Now, mind you, at the time, I had no idea if it was going to work. <laughs> and if they asked for a refund, I would not have had the money to give them the refund. It wouldn't matter. Or the right? other double. No, no, this is bullshit, complete bullshit, right? But I, I put it out, then I was like, I'll figure it out, I'll pay them back. We start the campaign the first day, 123 leads in a day, using those Facebook industry ads, and that was when it was like, holy shit, this is a thing. Right, right. And now you actually, before you even got into what you do now, you worked at 24 Hour Fitness. I did. So what, what did you do over there? I checked in people. That's pretty you know, like before, <laughs> before they had like the guns and all yeah. this stuff, I was the guy that was like, hi, welcome, have a nice workout. Mm -hmm. And then me and my buddy would actually just play Xbox in the back. And when our manager was gone, we would put the gun on the table and just let people check in themselves. So we started that. <laughs> and then you started a business. It was like, was it oil change? I had a mobile oil change company. Mo mobile oil change? Jeremy just taking all my wounds. Yeah, I had, a, <laughs> I had a mobile oil change company when we would actually go to people and change oil. Okay. And uh, it was a great concept. Who likes to go get their oil changed? Nobody. So I, I, I kind of modeled that mobile car wash model and did it for oil change. And it was good, but uh, I mean, we went out of business, so whatever. Well, then you got into the education stuff. Mm -hmm. And when you did, you overspent on a website. What happened there? The first time I, I ran Facebook ads um, for myself, I had that same fear. And tell me by show of hands if you can relate to this, where you're going to start an advertising campaign, you have your budget set to like 50, 100 bucks, and your stomach drops. Do you, does anybody remember that point? Where you're so afraid if you're not going to make your money back by show of hands? Maybe you guys weren't as poor as I was, but that was what I was thinking. And I was so fearful that if I don't make this money back, like everything was gonna go to hell. So I had my credit card on file, and that day, I, I planned to spend 50 bucks, and I woke up in the morning, and I spent $625. And I, I listen to that number now, and it's like, whatever, but then I cried, I woke up, I and cried because I was like, there's no way I can do this. But then I looked at my phone and I had 25 appointments from people who said, hey, I'm interested in having you do your marketing. So then I said, well, damn, if I can just sell at least one of these people something that's worth 600 bucks, right. then I can make my money back. I ended up doing $10,000 the next day. Yeah, it was cool, it was cool, it was fun. All right. So at my mom's house, and I told her, and she didn't believe me. Yeah. <laughs> the first thing she said is, oh, you did? Well, you can finally start paying some rent then. <laughs> if you have a black mother, you know how she said it, too. There's a lot of, <laughs> a lot of attitude. She's talking a lot of shit. No. So now, have you ever watched any Quentin Tarantino movies, like Pulp Fiction or anything like that? Yeah. If, if he's got a style where he goes, like, beginning to end to middle to beginning. So I'm going to quickly not go in chronological order, order. Okay. How much revenue did your business do yesterday? Uh, probably like uh, 110 grand. 110 grand yesterday. Cool. Yes, cool. like in 24 hours. That was, yeah, it was cool. I, I liked it. I'll clap for it. I, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> great. yeah. I think the cool thing now, about now, is that, that a is, once in a while thing, or you think something's going to happen today, or what? No, we're, we're, we'll be on track for that today, too. I think the cool thing about this promotion is that I think 90% of that was profit. So that was a game changer for us. So, yeah, it was, it was good. Is that good. pretty cool, guys? It was good. Would you guys say he's a pro at what he does? Yeah? Based okay. on one day. I could be Based on that, day two. And yeah. though today. And then also I was there for your birthday where you did it again. And the, actually, what did you, your birthday was bigger, wasn't it? Yeah, we did a, we had a, our first million dollar week. So uh, my birthday was May 1st. And um, on April 30th to so like that 7th or whatever, we did a million bucks. You know what? And, and actually, I remember I got a birthday gift for you. Kelsey. Kelsey's here. <laughs> Can she go get the birthday gift and bring it out, and then uh, and then we'll hand it to you once she gets over here with what it. Okay? it. And make sure, guys, whoever if she, if she didn't hear it, make sure she hears it and gets it. What did you get? Okay, huh? You'll find out. Why, why would I tell you if I if I could show you? All right, fine. Okay, so a million dollars in a week and, and a lot of profit from that. Yeah. Okay. So now, I remember uh, I told you it was like a year ago. I was like, man, I really want to take this to the next level. And your one piece of advice was, dude, run ads. Yeah. 
And I was like, I do run ads. You're like, no, 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 run ads. Yeah. And you were like, just spend, just spend, just spend. So when you were saying that to me, I know what you meant now, but yeah. like, tell, tell everybody here, like, what, what, when you say run ads, how do you look at running ads and, and like, how do you see the whole game with budget and everything? I, I think I'm a, a decent business owner. I'm still learning about um, process and, and a whole bunch of other things, but my strength is like aggressive advertising. And a lot of times I get the question, I'm sure you've gotten it too, is like, what's the fastest way to grow the business? What's the, what's the secret? And the secret is to spend money and to spend a lot. But when people hear that, usually the, the feeling is intimidation mm -hmm. because it's like, well, if I'm spending money, then I'm losing money because most people think of advertising as an expense. Right. And I, I, I remember the frustration talking with so many different, like, because I was selling all the gym owners and I talked to so many different owners. And I was like, hey, the budget to get to where you want to go needs to be 2,000 bucks, 3,000 bucks, 4,000 bucks. And they're like, nope, absolutely not. I talked to corporate, they said 500 bucks should get us everything that we need, da 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 da. And there's this poison in the space of everybody being so cheap. And what it is, it's a result of everybody playing so much defense and not playing enough offense. Right. So like, let me walk through the actual math. A lot of people say, I don't have the budget to have a $3,000 a month budget. Okay, well let's start small. What would happen if you spent $100 in a day, and then that day, you got two members that paid you 100 bucks? Anybody? You have 200 bucks. You have 200 bucks. So then what if you just took that 100, put it back, and then you did it again? And added the other 100. No, don't even add the other 100. Just do the same 100. Just keep doing it. And then you made 200 bucks again, and then you did it again. Well, over 30 days, you'd spend $3,000. And it, that's like so not profound and it's so simple, but that's the key to scaling and rapid growth is to make more than you spend. And so something that I see a lot of franchises, especially in the gym space, where you guys get stuck is you get caught up in your offers. They refuse to be creative and try new stuff. And as a result of that, it's like, hey, we built this business with one-week trials, and that's all we do. And I'm like, why can't you be more creative and try to give a month away, but on the first day that they come in, you know, get creative with what you can do on the back end to sell. Anyways, the, I think I've seen the most limits and, and the, the biggest stop of progression from people just not being willing to spend in advertising and to take on the challenge of making sure you make more than you spend. And it's not just spending in Facebook, because you're spending in a lot of different platforms as well, right? Yeah. So omnipresence, that whole idea. Well, we do, I mean, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, I've done billboards, because to me it's the same thing. Like when I look at social media, it's not Facebook. Facebook is a billboard, and you can type in and say, I only want you to show this billboard to these people. If it doesn't work, that's a user error, because mm -hmm. their only job is to show the message. And so, yeah, we go crazy with that. And I mean, in January, we spent about a half a million bucks on the Billy Jean is marketing brand. And for those of you that are looking to build a brand, it's also the fastest way to do that because with that 500 grand, our ads were seen 100 million times just in January. How and many of you guys have seen his ads before? Front. Well, yeah. I, um, and so uh, 100 million times just in that space. And to give perspective, an episode of Shark Tank is seen about four to five million times. So when we come in, we're getting 20 times the, the, the views than that TV show, and all of ours are targeted, very specifically, to entrepreneurs, et cetera, in this space, whatever it is. Like, dude, we can't well, be touched. And, and there's another level, too. So with Shark Tank, if I watch an episode of Shark Tank, I'm one of the four or five million, whatever it is, yeah. that's pretty much it. They just hope I watch it again next week. Yeah. With yours, if they watch a certain percentage, you can say, gotcha. Yeah. I know you're somewhat interested, and I can show this group of people, the retargeting list, yeah. more content, and I can keep funneling down people to well, something even better. Yeah, and I think the difference is like most people when they're putting out content, they're not making the offer behind it. And so for me, one thing that I've seen stop a lot of people is they'll create great content, but there's no offer behind it, so they can't monetize it and make that money back that we talked about earlier. And I think what people are afraid of is if they make offers, people will be put off. People will say, oh my God, they're only trying to sell me. But people don't care how many times you ask them to buy, they care how you ask them to buy. Mm -hmm. So if every time you ask them to buy, you can make them laugh, you can make them smile, right. you can make their day better, then they're going to look forward to your offers. Right. So what we went all in as a company is being creative with our ads, so when someone sees it in the newsfeed, they get excited to watch. They get pumped like, oh yeah, that's a Billie Jean ad, and that's why we do things so differently, because we want to flip that. Because think about it, on, on Super Bowl, what do we all do? 
We watch commercials. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we know they're going to be good and they're going to be funny. So why isn't that our standard 365 days out of the year? Yeah. Earlier or yesterday, if you guys remember my talk, I was showing you a bunch of different commercials, which were video ads, right, from different companies like Old Spice that came out of nowhere, yeah. right? Coffee companies, uh, diamond companies, right? And remember how they had series of videos? So that you could be like, oh, it's an Old Spice commercial. He's not doing anything different. It's like, oh, it's a Billie Jean ad. Right. And, and your theme that you stick to, you do a lot of like movie mocks, right? Something yeah. like that. So like what kind of movies have you made like parodies well, of? Well, let me, I kind of want to go tactical with that. So I've done The Greatest Showman and we've done a parody <laughs> of that. We've done The Wolf of Wall Street and done a parody of that. But we 007. don't just- 007. <laughs> but for us, we try not to just do random videos. We, we get obsessed with Google Trends. How many of you use Google Trends in your business to get a fill? Like, so I'll give you a tip. Go to Google, type in Google Trends. And if you go to Google Trends, they will tell you the top 10 things that are talked about in the world. They will tell you what's quote unquote going viral. Right. And then we make our videos based off of that. So when The Greatest Showman was coming out, they pumped in so many dollars, advertising, et cetera, I knew there was going to be a spike. So it wasn't me like wanting to do that, I was just following the trend. The Wolf of Wall Street was one of the you know, most famous entrepreneurial movies ever created. Mm -hmm. So when I decided to do like our parody of that, it's because it already had an audience. Right. It's the same way Justin Bieber got discovered on YouTube. He started doing his own versions of songs that were already popular, and then he started to build a fan base. But he got found because people would search for X, Y, and Z song, and then they would see his thumbnail underneath, and they would click him. That's the game. Make your content according to the trends. So for example, The Avenger was the number one trending topic in the world. Every single person here should have made a video about The Avengers. Like, how would a fitness studio do that? Look at Thor. Want to <laughs> look like Thor? <laughs> <laughs> Click here, you know what I mean? Like anything. Yeah. That was quick. Was that a quick like, answer for that? Because I didn't know so where That's you... what happens for eight years when you <laughs> sit there and you just write ads all day. Like, that's pretty cool. Okay, I'm going to take a quick break and come right back because I got your birthday gift. And before I do that, I'm going to tell a quick story. Billy Jean and I bought a piano the exact same day. Stop it. <laughs> we bought a piano the exact same day. So I bought a piano. I was, I was in the market. I wanted to buy a piano. I was excited to buy one. It was a baby grand piano. And he calls me up. He's like, hey, man, what are you doing? I was like, I'm at the piano store. He goes, the hell are you doing at a piano? There's stores just for pianos? And I go, yeah. He's like, you're getting a piano? I go, yeah. He's like, how much does a piano cost? I'm like, depends. Like, there's ones here that are only like four or five grand, but there's ones that are like 180 grand. They're crazy. He's like, no one would ever pay that. No way. I got to see this. And so I'm, I'm like, what do you Wait, mean? Can I, can I interject? <laughs> First of all, who knew that? There was a $180,000 piano. Like, okay, everybody knew that. Okay, I didn't know that. I also didn't, I also didn't know that Washington, D.C. was like, Washington, the football team. Anyways, who cares? So <laughs> the, the, the piano thing. When I found that out, my reaction was, I don't believe you. That's what and, I, said. and I was bored, so I looked up the nearest piano store just to prove you wrong. So he was on his way to a, a local piano store, wherever he was, just to be able to see it for himself and to prove me wrong. And he gets there, and we're talking about other things. We get back on normal business talk, and then all of a sudden he changes subject. He goes, holy shit, there's pianos here for like 90 grand. <laughs> like, yeah. You're right. I bought my piano. He ended up buying two pianos because he's Billie Jean. He I couldn't wanted... let you one up. <laughs> so he bought two pianos, and uh, we've been kind of competing ever since mid-December and seeing who can play the piano better and learn it faster and all that, which is fun because we're both competitive. But I, Billy doesn't know this, but uh, one night I caught him at a piano bar playing for a group of people, and he, he was drunk, so he probably doesn't remember doing it. But I, ca I caught the whole thing, Billy. Um, we're going to show you the picture of it. Kelsey, would you like, come up this way, come up this way. You guys want to see the picture of Billy playing at a piano bar? I want to see the picture. <laughs> yep, yep. Here it comes. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I can love we, it. Can we get a shot on this? This is so f ridiculous. Look at Thank that. you, dude. <laughs> That's amazing. I appreciate and, it. And you were, you, your body looked like John Legend's body that day. It was with, the same. With your <laughs> we, we double for each other. I do his stuff, he does my stuff, it's whatever. So Billy's got this a- This is awesome. You got a quote, what's, what's like your, your theme? For Think some? like a genius, anything like a genius. Anything, we, like I went to his event, he had a bag, it said bag like a genius, a pen, write like a genius. Drink like a genius. Drink like a genius, like a genius everything. everything. So this is, uh, I, I wanted to put something, like I was gonna do pianist like a genius, but- I would've. 
In my style, yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you All very right. much. So let's go back. You guys want to get back to the content? Yeah. All right, great. This is like tactical. I want to give us some shit that can make some money with today. Okay, so I want you to imagine you open a fitness studio today then. Okay. Can you be a fitness studio owner for this role? Okay. And, and you've worked with how many fitness studios and gyms in your career? About like a thousand. A thousand. Yeah. Okay. What, what are some of the brands so these guys know? Um, we did a lot of stuff for Orange Theory, did a lot of shit for Massage Envy, <laughs> uh, Club Pilates, Title Boxing. Um, okay, that's know, good. Okay, that qualify? So whatever. Qualify? Yeah. yeah, okay. Okay, so you start a fitness studio today, can't do anything else for a living. That's it. This is it. The rule happened. Laws are that way. Billy, we give you the title of fitness studio owner. Here's your studio. And let's say it's a, uh, a hit style training studio, okay. right? Like similar to an orange studio at 45 or something like that. It's like 150 bucks a month or something like that. Yep. And let's say I say, okay, here's the deal. You have zero members right now. Okay. Zero. And you have $3,000. Okay. You have the employees that you need, so you're set there, but you have $3,000. That's it. You got to figure out what to do now. Okay. Can I stand up for this one? <laughs> yes. Are you going right. to do this? Yeah, I want to draw some shit. All right, I'm going to stand too so I can see. Okay. So check it out. What I see, and again, oh, whoops. Um, I've worked a lot in this industry, and I've done lead gen for a lot of different uh, companies and, and whatever. But the biggest thing that I see happening in the fitness space specifically is all of the lead generation stuff that I did in 2012, people are still doing in 2019. That's seven years later. The barrier to entry is getting lower. Everybody's coming in. Everybody has a seven day offer. Everybody's got like a challenge. Everyone has the same thing. Everyone has better customer service. Everybody has the superior workout. Everybody has the magic post. And true or false? True. True or false? True. You guys didn't like that one? Yeah, true, whatever. But when I see your guys' advertisements, it looks like the same shit. Just the same person again, popping up, popping up, popping up, popping up, popping up. And here's the difference. It's just this. Right now, the industry, I'm not saying all of you are doing this. I don't know your personal businesses. Are telling versus demonstrating. Telling versus demonstrating. You run an ad and you tell people how great you are. You run an ad and you tell them how superior service is. How many of you have an in-house video person by show of hands? It's like 13, 13. So what I encourage everyone to do if I'm opening up a gym today is I would go all in on documenting the journey of all of your customers, period. I would have a camera person, I would hire one person and if I didn't have the cash flow to do it, then I would negotiate with them. There's a whole bunch of interns coming out of college that are looking for work, looking to build up their resume. That's so where would, McKenna came from, by the way. She was a free intern for and us. She's been great. Um, but I would go all in and I would document their stories. So, <laughs> and I, I like to, again, follow trends. So when you see any kind of fitness show on television, what's it about? Documenting the journey. And the whole magic is watching the transformation. It's not just the before and after, because anybody can go on Google Images and get a before and after picture. And when someone's not taking you up on their offer, it's only for one reason, because they don't believe you. They don't trust you, because it sounds like everybody else. So for me personally, I would go all in on bringing in a focus group of like, 13 people, 12 people, 10 people, 20 people, doesn't really matter. And I would document the everyday journey. I would show on day four when they wanted to quit and walk out and whatever it is, and that would be my video ad. Because everybody says they care, but if you had a 60 second video when John Doe was about to quit and then you as the trainer came over and you pulled into the side and she had the camera right there and you said something to them, so when they just turned it on and everything changed for them, now, who's signing up for that? Everybody. That's the difference between saying we care and showing that you care. The reason why my agency really grew quickly is because we weren't saying we're the best marketers out there. I called up Massage Envy and I said, hey, Todd, can we film a blitz? Well, I go into your business, I'm gonna run a Facebook ad, you give me 48 hours, and I'll bring you more leads than you've ever seen. I documented the whole thing from start to finish, 290 leads in like four days or two days or whatever the hell it was. I turned that into a video app, I put it on Facebook, and I said, who else wants to work with me? 
sell, 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 sell. So I would get obsessed with demonstrating. I would get obsessed with going Facebook Live, Instagram Live, YouTube Live, and I would make it all about the customer just capturing those moments. Because that's the only thing that's gonna sell and the only thing that's gonna separate you. Anything else, you're running to a big problem. Because here's what's happening on the social side. Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, the shit's getting more expensive. How many of you are at least spending uh, $1,000 a month on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube right now by show of hands? Okay? Now, how many specifically are spending at least $1,000 a month on YouTube ads? Look around, please. Everyone look around. I got the lights on my face. That's one. Anyone else? See? In 2012, when I came in, I was like, go Facebook, Facebook, Facebook. Nobody was doing it. What you guys have to realize in this industry, you have to be ahead of the curve. So I would go all in on right now. I wonder your competition is it. I got people coming up to me. They're like, Billy, Facebook's so expensive. Instagram's so expensive. Go to YouTube. When the market zigs, you should zag. Zag. The zag is on YouTube. Did you guys know on YouTube right now, they don't even charge you unless someone watches 30 seconds of your video. See, what you don't know will put you out of business. One of your competitors picks up on that. They start dominating the local industry. They're going all in on YouTube, and it's not even costing them anything. If I'm you today, where I'm going to put all my attention on is I'm going to capture those videos, and then I'm going to put those ads on YouTube. I'm going to target like a five-mile radius, and that is it. Do a, a standard legion form. Give me your name, email, and phone number, and I'm going to close on the phone. That's it. There's no catch. There's no, that's, that's the only thing. Does that make sense? Is that helpful? Are you sure? Here's the other thing with YouTube and, and specifically with the, uh, with the targeting. So on YouTube, you can actually advertise the people based on what they're watching. So if someone has a popular video out there of how to lose weight in 30 days or whatever it may be, you can actually put your advertisement on that video if the advertiser allows it. And how much does that cost you? Well, they don't watch 30 seconds of it. It doesn't cost you anything. And how much does it cost you if they do? Between one penny and 10 pennies. Opportunity, right? And you're not going to get it right on your first time. You're going to miss. You're going to strike out. But just keep trying. Because if an ad doesn't work, what do you do? Just make it again. The other thing I see that's dooming not just this space, but a lot of companies in the advertising space is a lack of speed. What happens is it takes three weeks to create that perfect video ad, which doesn't exist, by the way. And then you put that ad up, and then it doesn't work. What happens? You're demoralized. You don't want to spend again. You're like, ah, I don't want to do it. So you take a week or two off. Then you say, okay, let's try this ad thing again. And then it takes you another three weeks. In-house, I have a full-time media team of six. I have a marketing team just for my brand of five. Their sole job is to create ads. But when we want to create an ad, the same day we think of it, it's up online and we're testing. We spend no more than 100 bucks to know if something's working or if it's not. So don't give me the budget bullshit. 100 bucks will tell you if anything is working or if it's not, most things at least. And when it doesn't work, guess what we do? Next day, we build another ad. Speed is the game. Speed is the game. If you guys can create a rhythm, a process in your company where every single day you're just testing a new video advertisement on YouTube, I promise you, you will have more members and grow your company faster than any franchise in the world. That's my bold claim. And it costs you nothing. And by the way, if you've seen my ads before, you know I go all in on these like highly produced videos, but the ones that always perform the best, the ones me holding my phone, talking to the camera, almost every single time, those are more profitable. The other ones are great for branding, to be remembered, to be recognized, but the shit that makes the money, hey, what's up, it's Billy Jean, buy my shit. He literally says buy my shit in his ad. You wanna see something ridiculous? <laughs> like, if you can master the art of selling shit on video, you can sell anything. And I put to this to the test, this theory, that you can sell anything on video. So I tried the bold act of trying to sell nothing. Yeah. Literally, I sold nothing. Do we have a tape? Can we play the video? Can I show you guys a video of me selling nothing? 
<laughs> and if I'm selling more of nothing than you're selling of something on your video ads, you need to start taking action today, all right? Let's show this, I put this on Instagram. I made it with my cell phone, and I just, I literally sell nothing. Can we, can we play that? I don't know, where would you find it? Well, they got it right there. They got oh, it right you got it up there? Can you go to, can you re refresh it? Can you refresh now it from the beginning? Get refresh it. Yeah, there we go. You gotta, you, gotta, you gotta click out and then click back in. The beginning's hot, I don't want you to miss it. Okay? Ooh, oh yeah, baby, there it is. Almost done, ready for launch. 24 hours, you guys, the biggest flash sale ever is going down right now. That's right, I am selling nothing. Used to be $19,000.995. Now, right now, you can get nothing for $9.95. Upon making this purchase, you will receive nothing. Once you purchase nothing at a discount rate of $9.95, you will receive an email confirming you purchased nothing. Please don't get this confused with something because you will indeed receive absolutely nothing. Nothing will happen once you purchase. Nothing will show up in your house once you purchase. Nothing will change in your life, but you will be charged $9.95. Let's go. And then when you go to the website, oh my God, look at this. She says, I love nothing because it's giving me the opportunity to learn nothing. When you purchase nothing, you will learn the simple process to get nothing. Oh my God, what a deal. Head on over to buymynothing.com right now. <laughs> yeah. All right, you can kill it. You can kill it. So, what do you think? Yeah. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I posted that shit. I made $300 in like six hours. And here's the fun funny thing. People will find me on Instagram now, go to that, and I'm still getting paid from nothing. <laughs> and it just makes me wonder, why the f*** did I ever sell something? I mean, I can literally just do nothing. But again, it goes to like the, the practical skills of like growing your business. It's like, you guys have all of the content and resources that you'll ever need. You want to really f grow your business? Master the art of persuasive writing. Master the art of selling shit on camera. That's the game, that's all that was. That was just humor and me taking my cell phone and 300 bucks. And you guys actually have products and services that change people's lives. I think what happens too is most of the uh, fitness ads that I'll, I'll see, they're always focused on the product or they're focused on the service. But when people buy, they buy because they know, like, and trust who? You. Why did we forget that when we went to the internet? How many of you try to run an ad where you just literally put someone on your team there and start talking about them? Their background, their personality, what they're into. That shit works. So when you guys are running your ads, don't forget to sell you. People bought nothing because they liked me because I tried to sell nothing. Because they really got nothing. And then to really be a douche, I had my entire team comment and be like, oh my God, that was crazy. The thank you page was ridiculous. <laughs> so now people are like, wait, did he do something on the thank you page? <laughs> then they're coming like, yo, and then they just played along because they got got. So like, holy shit, the thank you page was amazing. And it became this thing. Anyways, sell nothing. Is that guys. crazy? Sell nothing. That's the moral of the story. Were we, were we doing an interview? We, welcome back. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so... I think the easiest lesson from that is, how easy is it to sell something when some guy's selling nothing? And, and the idea, and I get what you were doing with the point you were making is like, look, just advertise. You yeah. can even sell nothing if you just spend the money. You know what's funny, I didn't advertise that, but as a challenge, I will spend $500 on that ad and see if I could positive ROI. And I'll let you guys know the That result. was free? That, you didn't, that was organic? That was organic, I just posted that shit. I didn't even see that many people, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we only got a couple minutes left and I know you got to make your flight. So the last thing I just want to ask you, because this is something that I've struggled with as wanting to help this industry more than anything, and, and I think it's, I think we're getting there with a lot of them, yeah. uh, but there's still a, lot, a, a, lot, a long way to go. And it's, you know, hey, digital advertising, the leads that come from that, although there's high volume, it's not a lead from a referral or warm traffic or anything like that. This is cold. And so there's a different level of sales skill that you, you're going to want to develop yeah. and, and a, a blueprint you're going to follow because, you know, when it comes to a referral, yeah. I mean, you just have to not mess up. But when it comes to a cold lead, you have to have some skill. I know you do sales training with your team and you're big into sales. You've done some really good sales training yourself. 
you know, what's some advice that you can give to these guys so they can start maybe not only sharpening their saw because the resources yeah. are there, but also maybe just shifting their mindset around like why this is so important to focus on. For sure. Um, yeah, sales is important. You should be good at that. I think there's something else that you said now that I do trigger that I'd like to share with them too. Um, just from someone who sees a, a lot of advertising, marketing campaigns, one shift that I think is going to happen in addition to everyone having an in-house videographer, ladies and gentlemen, you guys need to have at least one person inside of your company who is solely responsible for the paid advertising. And you can also use agencies, you can use both, but you got to have somebody in-house because of what I talked about in regards to speed. Most of the time when I see small business owners doing, not just this industry, but all small business owners, is they want to spend the least on marketing that they can. When you, when you do your business plan, you don't even factor it in there. You're like, oh, I'll, just, I'll just post up on social data as viral. And then you want to outsource it and have somebody else who's not caring about it like you do. But then, let me ask you guys a question. If nobody knows you exist, can they buy your shit? There's nothing that happens in your company without marketing. There is nobody to sell if you don't have any leads. There is no fulfillment, there is no customer service if you don't have the marketing. If your business is underneath a million dollars in revenue, you got two jobs, marketing and sales. The rest of that shit is busy work. So everybody here, like today, 90% of your time needs to be on marketing. And if you're the CEO and you're saying shit like, I don't need to learn that, I need to just, I need to focus on growing my company and the marketing people, they can handle all that. You are gonna lose. Listen to me, I'm not saying this in a joking way. You're going to lose. As we move forward and with the tools that we have today, the CEO who ignores marketing and doesn't put in the time and the effort to actually understand it, you don't have to master it, but understand it, I'm gonna promise you something, you will be out of business. It's the, most, it's the most important part of your business. And if you, how can you even manage somebody or check on an agency to see if they're doing a good job if you don't know what the f they're talking about? Yeah, that's what I... It's true, guys. I mean, go ahead, you can clap. Yeah, that's, that's real. And I don't, I don't mean that like in a scary way, but like if I'm gonna do anything here and be helpful, like my tactics of like what you should do right now is like make a YouTube app, have an internal marketing team, have a, uh, an in-house uh, video person full time. Yeah, Here, so my wife and I, we, we just hired a nanny. And we were able to ask really great, great questions about what she's gonna be doing with the kids and how she's gonna handle the kids because we have handled kids and we understand how to raise kids and you know, we're, we, we know that. So the questions that we ask are good. Everyone should be doing marketing, and, and even us, like we have marketing people in-house, and we hire an agency. We hire an agency too. Vince Reed, which is friends yeah. with you, he marketed the entire GSDCon. And there's two reasons why I hired an agency. Number one, because they can do stuff that's more like, I don't wanna say copy-paste, mm -hmm. but it's more like these are the ads, these are the offers, we know we wanna get them out, optimize them, and play the game. Yeah. But then for us, like we're doing our own stuff. We were making videos with giraffes and the zoo and a bunch of weird stuff. Yeah. And I want, like you said, for speed, we can do this. And then for consistency, we can get this. But either way, I wouldn't be, like, I would have known if this was, Vince was a good guy at what he does or not if I didn't know marketing well enough to be able to ask good questions to be able to get the answer. Like, what's the point of asking a question if you don't know what the answer should be? That's mm. just a dumb question. Right? Like, an uh, example I used in some of my content was, like, going to buy a car, and people would be like, well, what, what size uh, tires are those? Well, what size are you looking for? Oh, I, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Well, why you ask, right? And so it's, it's important that you and Hold on, you guys are the worst. Because you hire an agency, and then you don't know about the social media ad shit, but you've boosted a post before, so then you go inside of there, and you start looking at shit, and then you call them up, and you're like, why aren't we doing this, why aren't we doing this? Or you have one conversation with that one friend who told you they're doing that one thing, and you're like, why aren't we doing that too, da 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 da, you're just f***ing shit up. Now that was a <laughs> moment of frustration, because I was being on the agency side so long, I had to deal with all that shit. So now I'm, uh. <laughs> and I'm gonna write some shit out for you guys. Hold on, sorry, Mike. I'm gonna uh, write some shit don't out. Don't apologize to me. It's your flight. I'm good if you can miss it. Yeah, I'm gonna miss my flight. <laughs> my flight. I got some stuff I need to get off my chest. Okay. Yeah. Hey, not really my flight, but like, let me hurry. Okay. Listen, simplest 
exercise ever. How many of you struggle with what to say on video? When you're creating your ads and like, you're like, this is good, but like, I'm not really sure, am I you know, being too wordy? Or how many of you struggle with knowing what to post in regards to content? Like, ah, uh, this is kind of confusing, right? Okay, here you go, simple exercise. Here we go, on the left side of your paper, I want you to write problem. On the right hand side, I want you to write solution. And then at the bottom somewhere, my hand running is really good, uh, say audience. You gotta be specific about who you're talking to, right? Like a woman who's 35 who just was married, she has different reasons for wanting to work out than the 21 year old who's in college and just wants to chase girls, right? Whole different lane. So you have to, for this to work, you gotta have clarity in the audience. But here's your whole content. What are the top 10 problems that a woman who is married, just had two kids, and she's trying to get back into shape, what are the top 10 problems that she's facing? What is it? Time, okay, cool, time is great. Boom. What else? Money. Money. Your kids are expensive as shit. I gotta get mine away. Okay, what else? Tired. Tired? Yes, energy. Hell yeah. Just I'm make gonna, up I'm stuff. Not gonna chime up. in on this. What else? I'm not gonna chime in. I'm gonna let the ladies do it. Okay. Doctor, huh? What was that? Knowledge? Confidence. Confidence. Uh. Motivation. Motivation, yes, accountability, all the stuff. Those are problems. So guess what your content is? Take out your cell phones. Hey ladies, if you're looking to lose weight but you feel like you don't have enough time, well here's what you can do. Boom, two minute response. Ladies, what does this say? I can't read my own shit. Hey, like, <laughs> that's how bad it is. Ladies, if you're looking to get back in shape but you don't have the money, well here's what you can do for free. Ladies, if you want to get back in shape but you never have the energy because you're always tired, here's what you can do. Two minutes. Do this exercise 30 times. You have all of your content done for the month. Then you place them on YouTube, and in front of it, put how to, right? How to work out when you don't have any time, how to do this. And now organically, people are discovering you. It doesn't take long, you can do it on your cell phone, and it costs you nothing. That doesn't cost you anything. But when people really like you and they love you, it's because you taught them something that they didn't know. That's the big secret. Like my videos, when I'm attracting people, I just teach them shit. Like what I did up today, I was like, hey, by the way, YouTube doesn't charge you unless they watch for 30 seconds. Like, oh my gosh, that's my dude right there. That's the process. Teach people shit they don't know and they will love you. So if you can do that, that's your whole entire content schedule, video thing, then like run ads to them on, actually hold up. What you should actually do <laughs> is post this on your social media handles. You guys all do pretty good, like socially and organically. But look at the insights and see which one was the most engaged, and that's the one you turn into an ad. Works, I'm telling you, make a lot of money. Very cool. Receipts. And guys, I, I can't agree with them more as it's exactly how we got you guys here. How many of you guys saw ads for GSDCon? Yeah? So you might have seen a few different types of ads. There was an ad that we had where it was about sales, right? Mastering sales, sales in the fitness industry. One just about finances, one just about scaling, one about marketing, advertising. It's like we had so many videos where I just stood in different parts of my office just so the background looked different. And if you saw me, I'm consistent, but the background's different, so it still looks like a different Wait, video. Wait, you just triggered some more shit. Hold up. <laughs> shit. Who is, stage is this anyway, Mike? How many entrepreneurs in this room also have ADD? Raise your hand. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Other thing, because you, you sparked it. Is <laughs> it's my fault. People, people, uh, people wondering, like, okay, hey, Billy, I'll create these videos, but how do I make them entertaining? Right? Because when you're posting on social, you're competing against butt cheeks. And, like, people, like, that's what they do, especially in this space. There's just ass everywhere. True or false? There's ass. Just so much ass. You're like, as a guy, you're like, oh, oh, I don't want to look at it. Like, but you don't. But you kind of do. So, like, how do you compete with that? And how do you, how do you make your stuff more interesting, okay? Three easy ways. Props, music, and environment, okay? So I'll give you tacticals for this. So music, you're not gonna be able to read this, but I'll write it anyway. So this is called audiojungle.net. How many of you are familiar with Audio Jungle? Okay, Woo! I'll give you another one. The second is called artlist, A-R-T-L-I-S-T dot I-O. So that's artlist.io and Audio Jungle. They're amazing because they allow you to search for music based on emotion. 
You can type in the word sad, and it'll give you like thousands of sound, like sad songs. And then you can sort them by best sellers, so you know which one's, which one's already hot. And the best thing about this is it costs you seven bucks to legally use the song. I see a lot of you trying to put like the new Ariana Grande shit in there. You can't do that. It's illegal, especially when advertising. But these songs you can use. And then props. Props is just using like anything, even mic stuff, like his microphone, the swivelness, the table, his, his background, everything he's talking about. Um, so go to Amazon.com or another website. It's called Shindigs.com with a Z, S-H-I-N-D-I-G-Z. And they have all kinds of unique weird items, oversized items, really small things, that's what she said, but whatever. So you can get all these items for like super cheap. And then environment, change the location of where you're shooting your videos. And if you're wondering where, go to Google, do this exact search, type in top 10 most interesting places in my city, whatever your city is. And then drive there and shoot your video there. You're going to see it increase in your conversions, I promise you. Super simple stuff. Is that helpful at all to give you shit like that? Like the stuff I saw? Cool. Saw you got me hyped. I'm like, I love it. I'm like I interviewing, but I'm like, I have so much I want to say. <laughs> so, it's... the other reason I hired an agency, Vince, um, was because remember I told you guys yesterday that it's hard to sell something that you won't buy yourself. Mm. And Vince cost me five times more than I charge anybody. And it's easier for me to come at peace with that number so that when I'm wanting somebody to invest a fifth of that, it's, it's easy for me because I understand the value, I understand the return, and to me it doesn't seem like a lot of money anymore because I pay more than that. And just like you guys, it, like when he said his fee, I was like, whoa, that was a lot more than I thought it was gonna be. But I was like, all right, well, he wouldn't charge it and he wouldn't be recommended to me if it wasn't a good number. And look at the room, it's filled up. Isn't that pretty cool? Yeah. It was worth it, it was worth it. And we, tell you the truth, we made our money, if anybody's wondering like how we're making money off of this thing, like I haven't sold you guys anything, we made our money back a month ago. We literally broke a sales record two months ago, broke the sales record last month, and we hit goal for the month on the eighth this month. Wow, hell yeah, great. And we, adver and we didn't advertise Loud Rumor at all. All we did was advertise GSDCon. But because all the ads are coming from Loud Rumor, people were looking us up and just by, like if we flipped it and said Loud Rumor, which we're definitely gonna do with Vince, um, it would've been a whole different thing. Mm. So it's, it just goes to show, and, and that, so that's another reason. That's I will always true. work with an agency to be able to sell something that I already pay for myself. And that, that's also, having an event, <laughs> and some of you know because you've had them, is one of the most different, difficult marketing challenges, period, for almost any company. Um, it's extremely hard to do. So again, that's why like when I walked out, the first thing I did is I commended you because I understand what it takes on the back. And so again, shout out to you, man. Great yeah, job. yeah. And, and if you guys like the intro on day one, the reason I did it was because I saw his and I was pissed that I didn't have a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> he had girls hanging from the ceiling, like the aerialists or Makes whatever. It sound like a strip club, though. No, not like that. It was like classy <laughs> stuff. It was, was yeah, so I should have said it nicer. It was like they're <laughs> professional aerialists or whatever that Just meant. Just had girls on poles everywhere <laughs> yeah, taking shots. No, no. He <laughs> did. All right, guys, did you enjoy the talk with Billie Jean today? Awesome. Well, I know you said you'd miss your flight, and if you told me it was because you wanted to go out and play Xbox, I'd have let you done it, but I know it's because you have to hang out with your daughter, yeah. and that's important, so I'm gonna let you make that flight, okay? I appreciate it, man. All right, thank guys, you, thank, thank you, you very much, me. Billie Jean. Thank you, guys. Hit him with, the, hit him with the CO2. Let's get some numbers, Thank you. Taking my time to perfect the beat, and I still got love for the streets. It's the DRE. for the gangsters all across the world. Still hitting them corners and them lolos, girl. Still taking my time to perfect the beat, and I still got love for the streets. It's the DRE. Since the last time you heard from me, I lost some friends. Well. Thanks for watching. If you like this episode, make sure you subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, Google Play, or YouTube. And to watch more episodes and get exclusive links from each episode, go to gsdshow.com. Again, that's gsdshow.com.